This is Algebra 2 with Trig, second day piecewise homework. Okay, we're going to work with evaluations. So we're trying to figure out which of these functions negative 3 goes into. So negative 3 is less than 3. It's not equal. It's not greater. It's not equal to 4. Well, that's the other problem. So negative 3 would fit into this one. 4x minus 3 is the one we're going to use. So 4 times negative 3 minus 3, negative 12 minus 3. So we're getting an f of negative 3 to equal negative 15. 4 is greater than 3. So we're going to say 5 times 4 plus 2. 20 plus 2 is 22. So f of 4 is 22. 12 is also going to be greater than 3. So 5 times 12, which is 60, we get 62. So f of 12 equals 62. We'll graph out our equations. We'll start at negative 1. Go up 2, and we're doing that for whenever x is less than 1, down 2 backwards 1. So when we're less than 1, the center equal to, we're going to have a solid dot, we come down this direction and call that y equals 2x minus 1. Then we'll be up here with a slope of 3. Whenever we are greater than or equal to. We'll plot out the graph y equals x, which has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. We connect the points from negative 1x all the way that are smaller than that with an open dot. Remember, we're looking at connecting the dots that are on the left-hand side, less than negative 1. It's not that it has to go down, but it has to go to the left of x equals negative 1. We have our second equation, which starts up at 2, or actually x plus 1, with a similar slope. And we're going to connect the dots that include negative 1 all the way until we get to 2 for your x. And then we're going to be on negative 1 whenever we are greater than 2. So again, if we cover this up, we are only going to connect the dots that are greater than 2. This function equals x. This function equals x plus 1. And this one is y equals negative 1. We're going to start out with 3. We can connect all the points that are greater than or equal to 2. And then we'll start at negative 4. And do our slopes of rise up 3 over 2, down 3, backwards 2. Connect the points that are greater than negative 2 all the way until we get to an x of 2. And it includes that one because of the inequality sign and it includes this one because of the inequality sign. 
this equation is 3 halves x minus 4. On the next page, we're going to write the absolute value. So we're going to get x minus 4, and then the opposite of x minus 4. This is when x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. This is when x minus 4 is less than 0, when it's a negative value. So our final answer is x minus 4. x is greater than or equal to plus 4 plus 4. Here we have to distribute. And we're going to use it when x is less than 4. So down at negative 4, we have a slope of 1. We're going to connect all the points that are greater than or equal to 4. This is y equals x minus 4. On this side, I'm going to connect, well first I'm going to plot my dots, 1, 2, 3, 4. All my dots that are less than 4. Remember, we're looking for x values that are less than 4, so I'm going to connect the dots on that equation that are less than 4 to the left of x equals 4. This is a little messier one. Takes more steps. We have 2 x plus 1 minus 5 and our domain is going to be what's inside the absolute value is greater than or equal to 0. And then the opposite of that, which is positive 2, where x plus 1 is less than 0. We distribute through. We subtract, subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1. So our final equation here is going to be negative 2x minus 7 when x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and 2x minus 3 when x is less than negative 1. Negative 7 is actually just off the chart. Then we're going to go up to backwards 1, up to backwards 1. And we're going to connect the dots that are less than negative 1. So there's my line that's negative 1. I'm going to connect the dots. That are to the left of negative 1. Less than x is negative 1. Now I'm going to start at negative 3. Do my slope of positive 2. And you can also go on the other side. We're going to connect our dots from negative 1 that are well, you may have noticed that I just did too. This is x is greater than negative 1. We should have connected those dots, I'm sorry. 
not less than. We should have connected the dots that were greater than. It kind of fell right off. And then I have my y-intercept and my slope. We have to do less than 1. This is the one that's less than 1. So our absolute value graph is down low. Notice up here that because the negative is in front, it's going to be opening downwards. That's always going to happen. It has a 2 out in front, so it's going to have a slope of 2. It has plus 1, so we know for a fact we'll always do the opposite of that. Minus 5 tells us that we need to go down 5 to get to its vertex. We'll talk about that at a different time, but that's a shortcut for doing all absolute value graphs. We're going to write the rule. This is a little hard to see, but you have a line coming in here also. So we're going to be on the line 1 whenever we are less than 2. And we're going to be on the line x minus 1 whenever we're greater than or equal to 2. I can put the equal sign on either equation. It doesn't matter. I like to put it on the one that moves to the right. It might help you first if you wrote the equation of each portion. This is y equals 1. This is a negative slope that crosses at negative 1, 2, 3. So y equals negative slope minus 3. And this is up at 3. So if those are my equations, then I know I'm going to be at negative x minus 3 whenever x is 1, 2, 3, 4 less than or equal to negative 4. I'm going to be at 1 whenever x is greater than or equal 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and less than or equal to 2. And then I'm going to be on 3 whenever Um, between 4 and 6. So first you need to know what your equations are. Then you need to recognize which x values does this graph include. 1, 2, 3, 4. From the 4 and the 5 and the 6 and the 7 and the 8 include this equation. You're on this equation whenever you're between negative 3 and 2. And you're on y equals 3 whenever you're between 4 and 6. Okay, we have our dot. It's going to be right on that intersection. We have that solid line. And then we curve up this way. Well, this equation looks like it has a slope of up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And it's crossing at 0. This one seems to be y equals 0. So we're going to start at 0, and we do that whenever we are less than 0. And we have a half x whenever we are greater than or equal to zero. Either equation can have the equal to zero portion, but it can't be on both. And it has to be on one of them. That completes our day two homework.